Hi, this is Cindy McVeigh from Crazy for Crafting. I am really excited to be doing my first video tutorial for you. And I thought that a good one to start with would be showing you how to watermark your photographs. So many of us upload photographs on message boards and blogs of our original projects and we want to be able to protect them so that people can't claim them as their own. So I'm going to show you um, one of the many ways to create a watermark. There are lots of ways to do it. This is a way that works for me and um, hopefully you'll find it helpful. There are two things you need to consider before you get started. One is the type of font you're going to use and I want to show you a couple of different things to consider. These are called serif, the first one is called a serif font and the second one is called a sans serif font. Sans means without and what that means is if you can look at the top one you see on the bottoms here of the t of the uh, F and the bottom of the T and up here there's extra little embellishments, extra little strokes. Those are the serifs and um, it makes it look a little fancier. If you look at the one on the bottom it doesn't have those extra little strokes. It's just a real simple block print. That's called a sans serif. Now generally speaking you want to use a sans serif if it's something if, as particularly if it's going to be on top of something else that's busy as in a photograph so keep that in mind when you're looking for your fonts and generally generally a good one to use for that is Arial I use that a lot and that's the one I'm going to be using tonight to show you how to do the watermark the other thing you want to consider is if you want to have an embellishment um, in your in your watermark so that it's not just text you can use some sort of image and this one shows you just a real simple black image you need something solid something not too busy um, a coloring book what we call a coloring book image with outlines is not generally very good for this because it's just too busy and um, it gets in the way both of the photograph and the print so you generally want to stay away from those something like this is good this is a um, GIF format that I had on my computer and um, as you can see the checkered background here means that it's a transparent background so that the only thing that's going to show up when I drag that into another image is the leaf part and the acorn itself the background is going to be completely transparent so you can use something like that if you have a transparent GIF. If not, you can use something. If you look over here, um, my Photoshop comes with a lot of images. I've selected flowers under objects. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, it comes with a lot of um, solid images that are useful. And we're actually going to use one of these. So I'm going to get rid of this one for now. But I just wanted to, well, maybe I'll just keep it so I can show you how to use that later. Um, the first thing you want to do once you've decided your images and your fonts is you want to create a new blank file. You're going to get this dialog box and we can just name it watermark. Well, I can't type tonight. And you're going to do, um, I use a width of 700 and a height of 500. That's more than enough. It's really pretty large. Um, but it gives you lots of room to work. So that's what I use. The resolution is 72 and um, the RGB for your color. The most important part is that the background is transparent so make sure you have that selected and then click on OK and there is your canvas that we're going to be working on. Now as you can see um, this is our transparent background like I told you about before. We're going to be working in white for our watermark so it's going to be really hard to see that on here. So what I do is I come over to my layers palette. Here's the layer we just opened up. If you click on this little icon that looks like a piece of paper with a corner flipped up, that gives you a second layer, gives you a new layer. And with that new layer selected, we're going to come over here and we're going to fill it in with some color. So I'm going to go down here to my colors and I'm going to double click on it and I get the color selector and I'm going to pick a nice purple because I like purple and then I'm going to pick the paint bucket and I'm just going to flood that layer with the purple so that now when I'm typing on there and putting my images on there in white I'll be able to see them. So now we're going to put the text in and each new element that we put in we want to create a new layer. So we create layer 3 we don't need to name it, it's going to name itself and you'll see that in a minute 
we're going to go over and choose the text tool. When you do that, your buttons up here, your, um, your toolbar changes to your text tools. And I'm going to go choose the Arial. Like I told you before, it's a nice simple sans serif. Um, I'm going to choose a smaller, let's start with uh, 30 and see how that looks. And now my color, the, my current color is purple. Um, that's the active color, whatever's on the foreground. And obviously that's not going to work. We want the white. So if you do this arrow back here, it switch, it toggles your colors back and forth. You can see, but you need your default colors, which are right here, this tiny little one, and that'll bring back your default, which is white and black. And then you can flip them and put your white on top. And now you go ahead and you put your text cursor in there and that's going to show you the size of it and that looks about right. So we're going to go ahead and type copyright and I want you to notice the spelling of copyright. It's very important. It is R-I-G-H-T not W-R-I-T-E. It's a common mistake. Remember it this way. It's your right of ownership of this property. Your right to control what is done with it. So it's R-I-G-H-T. Um, and that's how I always remember it. Now to put the copyright symbol in it, there is no such thing on your keyboard. So what you have to do is you press the Alt key and then on the number pad to the right, not the numbers across the top of your keyboard, but to your right you want to type in, while you're holding down the Alt key, 0169 and when you do that and release the Alt key, your copyright symbol pops right in there. Now you want to do the date, just the year is fine and then either your name or the name of your business or company um, however you t intend to identify your work you click the check mark to indicate that you're finished and you have it the way you want it and you accept that work and then you can grab it and you can move it around and we're just going to place it right there for now now if you look over in your layers palette you can see that it has named itself with exactly what I typed in there so now let's click on a new layer and or create a new layer and I'm going to go back to my text tool and this time I want a little bit more artistic um, fancier font and I'm going to choose this one called artistic it looks a little bit more like a script and I'm going to go bigger on my font so let's try 72 and I'm going to place my cursor there and I'm going to type my name because I want it to kind of look like a signature even though it's not my signature it's going to be my digital signature and click the check mark that I accept that and there I have it now just like in your word processing software you can change this um, bold um, your italic your underline and all those kinds of things try to avoid underlining that's not usually done too much um, and it's also just really busy and makes it harder to read. But you do want bold fonts. So choose something that's fairly bold or that at least when you um, select the bold tool that it makes it fairly bold. Otherwise, your watermark is not going to show up in your picture very well. So you notice that both of these are pretty good and bold and they're going to show up pretty well. Now I can go back and I can make this a little bigger and I think I will. Notice 72 is where we have it. That's the largest on my drop down. I did 100 earlier and so that is um, up here at the top. But if you want bigger than 72, you can just type that in. And let's go ahead and put in 99 and you can see that it makes it 99 points. So there's my signature, my copyright information. Now, one other thing I like to do, not all people do it, I like to put my blog address in my watermark so that if my picture appears somewhere else, and I'm trying to type while I talk to you, um, but if my picture shows up somewhere else on somebody else's blog, that it can be tracked back to my blog so that people can find me um, for the original files or to ask me questions about it. So I go into the second line of that just by um, putting my cursor here and hitting enter, go into the second line of it, and I type in my blog address. 